Judge, I texted Marie Velasquez last night, uh, telling her the time and how to join us. I don't know if she does have an iPhone. If not, I gave her the telephone number to join us. So she did not respond to me last night or this morning. Okay. I'll watch for her. Is that who we're looking for? I don't think so. I, I've got yes. it. Okay. Yes. Oh, Gina knows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think Francis has a, a lot of turnover at times, so I'm not always comfortable with saying exactly whose name is up. Judge, uh, Nurtri Agrani was the last caseworker I spoke to about two weeks ago. PD, because of the nature of this case, they decided to leave it with a tenured worker. So um, Michaela will be it from here on out. Okay, I got you. I'm sorry that wasn't relayed sooner. Okay, well, I don't have anybody else logged in. We'll go ahead and get started. It's uh, 9.23, so hey, we are here today for a review hearing. We are conducting this through Zoom. We are uh, live streaming, and Ms. Taylor's making our record. All right, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Todd Alvey, on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, I'm present and ready to proceed. Your Honor, Michaela Kirksey is going to be the St. Francis Ministries Permanency Specialist who will give us an update today. T.D. Hammonds for Maria Velasquez. Uh, I'm ready to proceed, Judge. I have not had any contact with Maria for about a week. Usually she will text me and we can discuss, you know, upcoming hearings or what has happened recently, but things have been silent for a little while. So I have not been able to get a hold of her. Stacy Zabala on behalf of the boys. All right. Um, then Ms. Kirksey. Welcome to the case. Uh, happy to have you here. And uh, what do you have that's new for us? Good morning, Your Honor. Um, as far as the boys go, they're both doing really well in placement. Um, we're pretty thankful for them. They've kind of had a hard run with this case, and they've stuck in. in they've stuck in there. So Zoriel, he's doing good. First grade. He's actually tested out of his federal education and graduated speech, so um, he's thriving in school. Uh, continuing counseling with Tim Envelson, um, really no concerns with um, Zoriel. Zabriel, he's doing good as well. He's in preschool this year. Um, they're really, they're interacting really well together. Um, there were other boys in the foster home that now are no longer there. And I think that they really thrive with it just being the two of them and kind of getting that extra attention. Um, one hiccup that we've kind of run into that was a concern with the boys was that they, they just have an advanced sexual knowledge above what's appropriate for children their age. Um, so with some of the conversations that were happening in the home, um, we did end up in an investigation report um, out of concern if something had maybe happened to the boys, a victimization or anything like that. Um, they were forensically interviewed, didn't make any cries outcries about anything. So we're kind of moving forward from it and just kind of taking it day by day with that. Um, <clears throat> at this point, I've turned in a legal risk placement request with our goals being changed. And we're just trying to find um, placement through one, Maria's contacts, people that she's recommended, and then two, kind of keeping a legal risk placement search on the back of our minds. So as far as permanency for the boys, that's where we're at. For Maria Velasquez, we've definitely struggled on making progress with her. Um, she won't allow any of the workers into her house or to meet in person. The only contact that I've had with her is over the phone. Um, she's had contact with me um, all the way up the line with St. Francis. I will say the communication has not been positive. A lot of it has been threatening different lawsuits, lots of um, inappropriate communication, refusing to work with the department. Um, she has stated several occasions that she is suing the town of Amarillo and suing CPS. And uh, I genuinely think that she believes that she does not have to adhere to the court orders in accordance with what she said. 
Um, she does not believe that she's being held to what's going on in this case. She says that her lawsuit with internal affairs um, overrides any precedent that's going on here. Um, so as far as foreseeable, you know, movement in the future, I don't know if that's going to happen with what she believes. Um, we've all tried to have those conversations with her, but they're just, they're not going anywhere. Um, with that being said, she has, for, she's failed to provide a hair follicle for us. And we do, your previous court order stated that we needed to have a urine analysis or a hair follicle that was clean or lower levels. Whenever I had gotten this case, they had started up with two different visits with mom because she had gotten a clean UA. However, once I got the case, I pulled the court order and saw that we were not in compliance with what was going on and we canceled those visits right away. Um, <clears throat> so at this time, we still don't have visits going on now. And then we did have a home study that Maria requested from an individual. That individual said that Maria was kind of making threats to her after it got approved um, and was trying to figure out where she was living. So after consideration of that, she said that she no longer wants to be involved as a caretaker. Um, but we are trying to find relatives to take the children in. So that's that's the updates on mom. Alejandro Rodarte, he's the father of Zoriel. He actually was located last month. He lives in Eagle Pass, Texas. Um, we made contact with him in September. He said that he does not believe that he's the father. He is willing to do a paternity test, which he previously missed his first paternity test. We got him rescheduled in October. He no-showed and I haven't heard from him since. And then Gabriel Aguilara, he is currently in Garza County Jail. He's still being held on the sexual assault charges and he has not made contact with the department at this time. Did we ever get any service on Mr. Rodardi? Um, I, yes, he has a service plan and we also sent oh, no, him- no, 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 service. I, I meant like service citation. That was really a question for probably Mr. Alley. I apologize. No, it's okay. I didn't and judge, I believe that we do um, when we found him, but if we haven't, uh, and I'll double check just to make sure, I don't think I've seen a return. So we'll, we'll double check. Okay. All right, Ms. Ms. Kersey, I'm sorry. I, uh, I apologize. Um, all right, then. Um, did Mr. Rodarte give any indication yet that, yes, he thought he was the father or was he more adamant that he was not? I mean, if he did, one or the other. He was very adamant that he was not the father. Um, whenever we spoke to him about um, going and doing the paternity test, he said that the only reason he was agreeing to do the paternity test was so that he could prove that he wasn't the father. All right. And Mr. Aguilera is incarcerated? Yes, ma'am, he is. All right, we've had personal service on Aguilera, Mr. Alvey. Are we going to go ahead and get an attorney appointed to him before we start rolling into the final? It would probably be in all of our best interests so that we don't have to worry about it on some kind of an appeal, Your Honor. Yeah, I think so. All right, so we need to get appointment done on him. Is he in TDCJ? No, I don't think so, Your Honor. I think he's still in just the Garza County Jail. In okay. Post. All right, then. Um, and we've got an unknown father plot in, and obviously Mr. Rodarte didn't appear for genetic testing. And so I guess the same question there. Do we want to go ahead and get an appointment done for unknown father? We, we do, Your Honor. Um, again, it, it, it looks like we're going to end up trying to terminate everybody's parental rights. And with that, I would prefer everybody to be uh, have counsel um, so that we don't miss anything. All right, so Ms. Canada and Ms. Katie, I guess uh, we'll get that handled. Um, so the so St. Francis has not been in mom's home now since what time of removal? Um, I do not know the last time that they made contact. I will say that the address that she's given us, she's told me that she is not actually staying there. And I explained to her that I needed to have the address she was sleeping at to visit it. And she said, no, you have my home address, but I'm just, I'm not going to give you the address that I'm staying at. So, yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. So we had a clean UA on her, but no, we've not got a hair test. Yes, ma'am. Did we get one initially? 
Um, mm -hmm. We do have initial screen to go off of. <clears throat> I believe it was, I'd have to check the court report, but it was a while back. About this time last year, I believe. Yeah, about, Jan about January, Judge. And that's all we've got on her. As far as a hair test. Yes, Your oh. Honor. Well, I'm going to stick by that order until we get another hair test to give us some idea about level. You know, maybe it's clean. I don't know. You know, that's the problem. We don't know. Um, but we'll just continue that in effect until we until she'll hair screen for us and we can take a look at that. Then I'm, I'm not going to start any visits. You know, her. Her behavior is erratic. Is it that, that accurate description? At least. Okay, Mr. Hammonds, anything going today? No, Judge. I would uh, confirm everything the department has said. Uh, Ms. Velasquez has been very difficult. My communication with her, she's extremely profane and threatening. She will send me links from the internet that describe, you know, the department as, I'm going to say basically Nazis that are kidnapping children throughout the country and being paid for it. Uh, she did have a criminal case judge. She pled, was given 10 years deferred last month. I do not believe she's cooperating with the probation department either. So she may have some difficulties coming up there. <laughs> I'm going to tell the court, I know you've issued this new rule that before the final, we should go to mediation. I do not think that would be in anybody's best interest in this case, judge, because I think it would place everybody who appears at that mediation in a very difficult position. Uh, I, I, this is an exception to that rule. There were always okay. exceptions to the rule, and this is clearly one of them. Okay, because I was going to say, unless we have security at the building that we're going to meet at, it's going to put us all in a very difficult position. Yeah. No, it's it's a, it's a lost leader in this case, and we all know it, and it's, it would be a waste of your all's time and a waste of county resources. So, I am going... I will not require it. Okay, I'm going to continue... My main objective with Ms. Velasquez has been to get her to give a clean UA and hair follicle to the department so that she can begin visitation with the boys. You know, she tells me she's clean. She claims that the department falsifies her records and it's just a circular argument. Uh, I will continue doing the best I can, but <laughs> It's been very difficult. And Mr. Hammonds, we, we, at least I completely understand and I'm appreciate you hanging in uh, with this. And I know it's been very difficult. So I, I can't thank you. Enough. Well, and I will tell you my position, Judge. She's told me, you know, she doesn't like me. She'd like to have another attorney and things of that nature. Uh, my position is, Judge, when I get appointed on a case like this, I'm going to do the best I can until the court tells me otherwise. Because the reality of it is, Judge, if you appoint another attorney who is my age and has been doing this as long as I have, they're going to be having the same conversations that I'm having with Ms. Velasquez. Nothing is going to change. Clearly. Clearly. So, yeah. And and uh, she's, you know, very fortunate to have an attorney that, that's yours at, that has the seasoned ability that you do, Mr. Hammonds. And so, you know, um, if I appointed somebody else, they might not have the experience. So she's, she's very fortunate that she has you. It's unfortunate that she's not going to take advantage of that. You can lead a horse to water. Exactly. So As Ms. Taylor's horses appear to be thirsty behind her. Yes. I enjoy seeing them wander by from time to time. We have uh, Judge, if you I, give Ms. Kirksey just a minute longer, she'll give you an update yeah. on Ms. Velasquez's criminal cases. Sure. 
And I apologize, that one slipped my mind on the update, Um, but I did contact her probation officer. She was supposed to be on probation for 15 years. I believe it was some kind of assault of charge against a woman. Um, As far as appeals go, I was told by her officer that she had made several different appeals. One of them finally stuck. So as as of right now, she is not on supervision. Um, She is going to have a trial, a retrial, and then is facing eight years. So I guess that's kind of where we are as far as probation and all of that kind of stuff is she's not currently being held to any of the probation um, rules or expectations. Judge Misty Walker represents her on that case. I will call Misty and kind of see where that stands. Uh, I knew she had filed a motion for new trial that was denied. Uh, She may have then just filed uh, an appeal she pled to the case judge. I was up there that morning. She pled guilty. She was given 10 years deferred. The odds of her appeal being, you know, granted are kind of slim to none, but I understand that may be six, well, six months to a year down the road before the court of appeals makes that decision. So we're going to wrap this up before that. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be interesting to know what's, what's going on with that. If it was an ineffective assistance, if it's, if it's, the last time I spoke, I don't think she would have raised incompetency, but I, I, it's almost a shock. Uh, that the council hasn't raised it, but I know the last time, very the last high time, when I was up there that morning, judge, I mean, Misty spoke to her three to four hours prior to the plea. They had a jury downstairs ready to come up. She was number one on judge Frosto's trial week. Uh, it is an ag assault with a deadly weapon, a knife. I looked at the photos, uh, she is going to be hard pressed to walk out of the courtroom a free woman. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, Misty Walker has the same relationship with Miss Velasquez that all of us do. So she's doing the best she can. Yeah. Okay. Well. Um, that's just going to play out and, and probably will not probably will not be before uh, the final in this matter. So, all right, uh, Ms. Zavella. Um, Your Honor, as you know, when this was still a family-based case, I met in the home with her and, and the kids. Um, the difference in the boys now I mean, to say it's striking and dramatic is such an understatement. I mean, the boys are doing so incredibly well. Uh, the oldest one is on AB on a roll. I, I mean, just the difference is crazy. Um, I, when when the few visits were happened, um, we almost lost the placement that the boys have been in. They because. Every time there would be an investigation, she would call it an investigation on on placement because the boys have been out in the sun too long or, you know, um, so, and then in the same period of time, we lost what appeared to be a, a very promising family placement, um, because of threats and, and things. Um, I'm afraid that if those, if those visits start up again, we're going to lose the placement and I I don't know where, where they're going to end up. And right now they're doing just amazingly great. Um, so that's it's my recommendation that they remain there unless a legal risk uh, placement becomes available. This is not a legal risk placement, um, but a, a legal risk or an appropriate family placement. All right. Well, uh, it's you know we're getting very close to our final, our scheduled final, and and you know I I just cannot in good conscience start visitation with mom and the children at this time. She's worked no services. Um, you know, it, it's, it's apparent to everybody that she's got a raft of problems and issues that, you know, quite frankly, are not going to be fixed by us, um, sadly, um, until she makes some decisions to try to help herself. Um, I, and, and, and not, and, and with the drug history that we, we do know, um, I'm absolutely not comfortable in putting the kids back into visitation with her. Um, I think, I think it could be psychologically very damaging to the children. 
Uh, you know, she, she's very unlikely to follow any rules of visitation, um, you know, any rules of what can be talked about or what can be said to the children. Um, it's, it's just not been the history here. You know, sorry, TD, I'm not, I'm really not trying to dump on your client. It's just, it's very, it's just, it's very sad, unfortunate, either drug induced combined with mental health problems, uh, uh, untreated mental health problems, or, you know, uh, combination thereof. But yeah, Judge, no, she needs people to speak the truth to her. She doesn't want to hear the truth. And, you know, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I know that she continues to try to contact through Ms. Katie. Um, I just will assure everybody I'm not privileged to those communications. Ms. Katie's built a great Chinese wall <laughs> in there. Uh, you know, but but I know Mr. Hammonds is aware that it's going on. And and uh, but I, I rest assured. I don't see it. Don't hear it. So, uh, OK, then I will continue the department as temporary managing conservator and continue. The children's current placement, like I said, no more, no visitations till we have a uh, hair uh, screen on her, and I can take a look at that and even make a decision about it. Um, obviously, I'm going to make a finding based on all our conversations that it would be a continuing and ongoing danger to return the children home to their mother at this time. Obviously, the children cannot be returned to Mr. Rodardo. We don't even know if he's a father. Mr. Aguilera uh, is incarcerated. And then the other, we have the unknown. So it's impossible to return the children safely to any of those gentlemen. And, um, you know, clearly the department has made reasonable efforts. Everybody's made reasonable efforts to try to, you know, reunify the family. Um, okay. Then I'll see everybody for our final on January 9th of 2024. And uh, that's on a nine o'clock docket. We'll get attorneys appointed for the unknown father for Mr. Aguilera, Mr. Rodarte, and uh, I'll see everybody back then. So, Ms. Canada, Ms. Katie, uh, let's get those appointments done as quick as we can to give those folks time to get ready. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you. you. And I'm not involved in the next one, so I'm just going to go dark. Okay. It's to show what environment will do for the kids. I mean, it is a crazy difference. It Amazing. I mean, it's... I think I wrote down your words. Did you say it was striking and phenomenal? Were those your words? I, I know striking. I can't remember what the other one was, but I mean, it is dramatic. Maybe it was dramatic. I don't know, but just the difference in them. I mean, talking you know, all. There, yeah, there, there was a thought that that one of them was autistic, and I believe that's what I believed at the beginning of the case after a meeting in the home. It, I mean, it is. It's crazy amazing how well they are doing. Well, I know we're on YouTube, they love it there too. I know we're on YouTube, but it did, I mean, it did, it did appear. I mean, it was just chaotic. It was just a chaotic environment. Yeah. And I think that's an, an understatement. Uh, okay. We'll take announcements. Todd Alvey on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. I'm present, ready to proceed. Tomorrow, Ring with St. Francis Ministries will be the permanency specialist who will give an update today. Barry Morales, I'd like to approve Kevin's all your honor, ready. Natalie Archer for the mother, Amber Robertson, present and ready. Vince Nowak for the father, Mr. Gonzalez. We're, I see him on screen. We're present. We're ready, Judge. All right. Thank you. Okay, then. Um, what do we have news since our court report was filed? Um, since I filed the court report, the parents have completed their psychosocial evaluations. Um, they were completed on October 11th. And the recommendations in the psychosocial was that um, the parents may require more intense services for them to be successful. And um, there's been an ongoing concern with their continued um, use of methamphetamines. Um, when we filed the court report, I didn't have Amber's oral swab back from September 29th. 
I did get that back and it was positive for methamphetamines and marijuana. Um, in regards to Amber, she still needs to complete, or she still needs to start the Padre program um, and get into um, the drug, a drug treatment program. As far as I know, she has not started Cinecor, which was recommended in OSAR. Um, and, oh, and with her probation, um, she's continued to also test positive for them on their, for methamphetamines. Um, for Juan Carlos, um, he's not been drug screening for probation, but he has been admitting to drug use. Um, and he is attending outpatient treatment at um, Texas Panhandle Centers, but he has missed two sessions already. And um, the limit is four, he only have four absences. And so they're a little concerned about that. He just started um, not too long ago. Um, and then in regards to Miguel, Miguel is doing great in his placement. He's thriving. Um, He's starting to hit those milestones that he was behind on. Um, he's crawling, pulling up, just an overall happy baby. Um, and he continues to receive ECI um, every other week and there's no concerns with him. And he's placed with his brother, is that correct? Yes, he is placed with, placement has PMC of his brother where he's placed. Right. I'm seeing a negative oral swab that was done on Mr. Gonzalez back in September, late September. Yes, ma'am. And so he did do yeah. that for us. Yes. And can I, I think I'm losing internet. Um, sorry. Is that better? Yeah. Am I, do I, can I stay off or do you want me to turn it back on? No, leave it off. Maybe and we and we'll have good audio with you. Okay. Um. Yeah. Um. I wanted to add. Yes, he did test negative on an oral swab for me on September 29th. Um. I did speak to his probation officer after that, and he saw his probation officer on October 3rd and had admitted to drug use on October 1st. All right. Have we have they started any other services, any counseling, anything like that? And um, they completed their counseling um, back in August. Um, there was a miscommunication about the psychosocial, which is why it was completed later. So what do they really lack uh, other than obvious, the obvious, than the elephant in the room, which is negative drug testing for minimum assistance, but what? Okay, so Amber, Amber needs to get started with Padre. Um, she was referred to Cinecor um, through her OSAR evaluation. I have not been able to confirm if she's going or not. I need to have her sign a release for me. Um, and then she is currently unemployed and they are currently, re oh, that's the thing I forgot. They are currently residing in the Camelot Inn, which is a concern. Um, I know they are struggling. Um, I know Am Amber's act Amber reports she's looking for a job. I know they've been struggling lately financially. Um, so she needs so, and that is other than a clean um, getting sober. That's what she lacks, and that um, and then Juan needs to get into the Padre program. Um, he is current. He is currently employed. Um, like I said, they are struggling financially just on his paycheck. Um, due to he pays child support on his other children, and so for yeah, for him, it's just he needs to get sober and continue working his drug treatment class and get into Padre. All right, Ms. Archer. Well, in addition to uh, my client's drug issues, she also has a lot of health issues. So some of the reasons she hasn't been able to do services are, is just her physical health. But she did contact my office yesterday and say she wanted to look at relinquishment papers. And so we have she has an appointment tomorrow morning. We're going to go over that and talk about it further. Okay. 
Has she considered any intensive outpatient services? Um, I will have to talk with her about that tomorrow if she still at, wants to. I meant inpatient, excuse me. Oh. But, is she, I can't tell by the, my phone Zoom. Is she present this morning? She, she is. is. She is. I am. Okay, so she could probably answer that question better. I'm in intensive outpatient services with Cinecor. I started my first outpatient class yesterday. I go Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 5.30 to 8.30. And then I also have my one-on-ones on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. And that would be therapy sessions with a one-on-one -on -one therapist at Cinecor. Okay. And the project program hasn't contacted me yet, so I'm not sure if I just need to contact them or yes. what I'm doing for that. Yeah, you need to make contact with them. Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Noah. Judge, I have nothing, but, but when we finish, if I could have a breakout room with my client, I would appreciate that. Sure. Thank you. Okay, and Mr. Morales. Um, Your Honor, I don't have much to add other than, uh, you know, the same concerns uh, with the history and the continued usage, even with services work. Um, obviously, I'd like to see some, not just sobriety, but extensive or, you know, long-term sobriety. Um, so, I mean, right now, just continued placement is, is what I have. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, you know, um, I'll just say to Ms. Robertson and Mr. Gonzalez, you know, that that is the that was the the big concern at intake. It's it can remains the big concern. Um, you know, all I can do is encourage you both to look at some sort of very intensive programs. Mom, obviously, you're doing an, an outpatient one. It's a good start. Um, you know, but we only have a certain amount of time in these cases. So um, all I'm telling you is you've got, you know, you've got some time left. We're set for a final in December. Um, and and so, you know, the clock is ticking. And, and, you know, we typically like to see at least six months of sobriety, you know, and stability. So you guys have got a lot of work to do in the next several months. Um, so I I just, you know, encourage you to reach out for the help that's being offered to you. All right, then until that time, I'm going to continue the department as temporary managing conservator and I'll continue the child's current placement. Uh, I'm going to make a finding that it would be a continuing and ongoing danger to the child's health, safety, and well being to return the child home to either parent at this point in time. Um, we've, we've not completed services and we obviously have not achieved any kind of, any kind of sobriety. I, I'm pretty sure, let me look back. Um, you were both present at the status hearing when I admonished you uh, you both that, uh, you know, failure to work your services could result in termination of parental rights. Um, and in particular, you know, I admonished that you can work all these services, but if you can't achieve that kind of stability and sobriety, you know, I, I cannot send a child, in, in, in particular, a one-year-old child, back into a home where another's active drug use. It's just not safe. Uh, the drug of, of choice here is methamphetamine. It's very dangerous to all children and all people, but it's particularly dangerous to, you know, very young children. So, um, you know, I certainly can't send Miguel back today. And uh, I'm just telling you all that is a preview of what's to come. Um, you know, the court just cannot put a child back in a home where there's active drug use. So with that being said, I wish you all the very best of luck in the next few months about trying to address this issue. Um, I will see you on December 19th of 2023. That's on a nine o'clock docket. That is our final hearing in this case. Okay, I appreciate y'all logging in and um, y'all have a good rest of your day. Judge, would, I, and I'm not sure if Ms. Archer wants to join us or not, <clears throat> but I just want to re remind the court that I'd like to speak to uh, Mr. Gonzalez, and he's, he's there with Amber. And Natalie, if you want to join us, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, I was going to ask. 
Uh, unfortunately, I'm at Carson County Court. I need to get up to dock it. Okay. Right. Do, you, do you have any objection to me talking while, while your client's present? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, and I'll be following up with her after I get back. Thank you. And, and Judge, after that, Zoom I have permission to leave finding the a good cause and agreement sure. of the parties. Thank you, Judge. And we are also live streaming, and Ms. Taylor's making our record. All right, we'll go ahead and take your announcements. Melinda Powell for the Department of the St. Francis Permanency Specialist today is Kerrigan Hensley. I'm Brooks Barfield for the mother, Sophie Valdez, President Ready, and she is uh, President Ready as well. Judge Teresa Ratliff for the uh, father, Juan Valenzuela uh, Sr. Judge, I learned this morning he's in the Potter County Jail. Um, so he will not be present. Okay, thank you. Stacy Zavala on behalf of the boys. All right, then. Um, Ms. Hensley, what do we have new since our court report was filed? Hi, Judge. Yes, um, the boys are both doing really well in their placements. Um, Ezekiel is in a kinship home in Amarillo and is doing well. And Juan is in a foster home in Follett and is really doing well there. Um, since the court report was filed, um, Juan was incarcerated on October 5th. Um, I have taken mom to drug screen on October 9th, um, where she did come back for small levels of marijuana. And then I also took mom to Cinecor on October 12th, where she is going to start inpatient rehab for the next two weeks. Ms. Hensley, this is the status hearing. Have you discussed service plans with any of the parents? Yes, I went over the service plan with Sophia and she signed it. Um, and when I was going to go over it with Juan, that was when he was arrested. So I have plans to go out to see him this month and to go over it in detail with him then. Okay. And I am looking at the family plans that have been filed in this case. And it doesn't appear to me that mother's has been filed. I think you filed two for Stephen Rodriguez. Can you make sure you get mother's service plan filed? Yes. I'm so sorry about that. And, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of behind. Um, Stephen Rodriguez, have you had any, have you been able to locate him at all? Yes, I did a diligent search request and his address showed in Dallas. Um, I have not made any contact with him, but I will be requesting a worker to go out in Dallas and um, check that address. And when I've asked Sophia about him, she has confirmed um, his locations in Dallas. Okay. That's all I have, Judge. They just need to make sure they do get um, Ms. Valdez's service plan filed. Um, I I just pulled it up to double check, and it they it has the um, cover sheet says Sophia Valdez, but then um, the plan that was attached was Stephen Rodriguez. So they do need to get that filed. I show one file for Stephen Rodriguez and one filed for Juan Valenzuela. So just and and not anything from us. So if you could get it filed today, Ms. Hensley, that would be great. Yes, Judge, I can do that. And, and you said um, Ms. Valdez did review and sign that? Yes. Okay, thank you. That's all I have, Judge. Okay, then uh, Mr. Burfield. I have no questions, Your Honor. Um, as far as my client goes, she's participating in services. So um, I think that's just the next step. Okay. All right, and Ms. Ratliff. Judge, I've, I have not obviously had a chance to review the plan with Mr. Valenzuela, but um, I've reviewed it myself. It's, it seems appropriate. Um, and I just asked the worker when she goes to meet with him uh, to provide him a copy of his plan and then provide me an update after that. But I have no issues with his service plan. Um, I have no idea about how long he's going to be incarcerated. It's unlawful possession of a firearm. Okay. All right. We've lost mom. So I'll give her a minute, see if she can get logged back in. Okay, um, Mr. Barfield, I guess we need to go ahead and move forward. She's and she's fallen out again. Would you have an opportunity to contact her just to because it, be in the status hearing? I want to make sure she really understands about the order of the court and everything like that. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, Judge. We'll, okay. Yeah, we'll make sure and we'll make sure and reach out to her and make sure that every the service plan that now becomes an order of the court and everything like that. That's no problem at all. All right. I appreciate it. And no, no problem. If she gets logged back in, I'll, I'll connect her, of course. Uh, that's fine. I, I need to probably clog up your whole day, by the way. I mean, 
but there she is. Okay. All right, Ms. Valdez, can you hear me again? Then, uh, Ms. Valdez? Yes, Your Honor. Um, the boys are both doing very well in placement. Um, Juan has some some issues that are being looked into, um, but placement has been um, taking him to all the medical. He is almost one and is unable to sit up at this time. Um, they've done some chromosomal testing and have ruled, ruled that out. He's set for a uh, neurology appointment later this month. Um, he's eating well. We've got ECI coming in weekly to work with him. I think they're doing everything they can to, to be working with him at this point. Um, and, and he seems to be very sweet and happy. He's just behind. Um, so, so we're trying to figure that out. Um, Ezekiel's doing very well in placement. And I apologize because I feel like I've had a conversation about this and I cannot find my notes, but I had thought that there might have been a home study being requested on an aunt that might be able to take both of them. And, and I feel like maybe St. Francis filled me in on that. And I, I can't find it. Kerrigan, do you know if, what the status is of that? Yes. Um, we are waiting for the final denial from the permanency supervisor, um, director, sorry. Um, and then there is another home study in the works for a fictive kin in Canyon that is willing to take both boys. So I'm in the process of getting that submitted. Okay. And, and I feel like you've told me that before and I apologize, but no, it's okay. it's okay. All right. So the home study came back denied and it's just a question of the supervisor then can, just affirming that and then we'll move on to this next one. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, because I sure like to see the kids together. All right. Um, okay, Ms. Valdez, just so you know, we stopped. We didn't proceed. So you, you have not missed anything. Just wanted to be sure that, that you knew that. All right, then. So it's important, Ms. Valdez, for you to know. I know you've signed your service plan. And... Um, you know, get going on all those things because I'm going to make your services in order of the court today. Okay. What that means is that I do expect you to work them and failure to work your services could mean that uh, the boys don't come home and worst case scenario, it can mean termination of parental rights. So I, I know you don't want that. I know you want them home. And um, so just work with these folks and they're going to work with you and this can all have a very good outcome. Yes, ma'am. I'm doing all my, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. I appreciate that. You just keep up the good work. So I will see you back on February 20th. Okay. Uh, 2024. That's on a nine o'clock docket. We're going to have another review hearing then, but until then I'm going to continue the department uh, as temporary managing, excuse me, temporary managing conservator, and I will continue their placements. Um, I do want to get that other home study started as quickly as we can. I am okay. going to be finding, though, that um, it would be a continuing and ongoing danger to return the children home uh, today. Um, and obviously, uh, we've not really located Mr. Rodriguez yet, and Mr. Uh, Valenzuela is incarcerated, so the kids cannot go to either one of them. Um, right. So um, I will see everybody back then in February. Okay. Hey, right, thank you. Miss Grimsley's getting on the ball in regards to services here. I'm sorry, what? I said Miss Grimsley's getting on the ball. I'm looking at the file here. We're here today for our status hearing. We're conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. Uh, we are live streaming and Ms. Taylor's making the record. Okay, well, take your announcements. Melinda Powell for the Department of the St. Francis Permanency Specialist today is Jalissa Bird. <clears throat> Joel Jackson on behalf of the mother, Naja Grimsley, present, ready, your arm. Jeff Hill on behalf of the father, uh, Justin Grimsley, Judge, ready. Stacey Zabala on behalf of Gabrielle. All right. Uh, what do we have news since the court report was filed? Um, at this time, um, the court report 
uh, reflects uh, what's going on currently um, in the case. Um, so the child's still having some behavioral issues. Um, so that's a, a continued issue. Um, we are asking that uh, we can have a neuropsych and brain mapping for the child due to the issues she is in therapy. Um, so she's receiving uh, individual therapy weekly. Um, parents have reviewed family plans um, and agreed to work services. Um, so that's kind of the update that I have. I believe it's on the court report, but um, the most recent update. And they both signed their service plans? Yes. Okay. And dad is currently incarcerated um, at Potter County. So he is still in Potter County. And judge, oh. it does appear that mother has begun working some of her services. Great. All right. Um, <clears throat> back to the neuropsych. Um, I have absolutely no problem with having that done. Uh, do you need an order from me to get that done? in the brain mapping yes all right and we've been meeting with her treatment team um and just kind of uh working all together i know even mom has had some input and in trying to help us uh with the with the treatment team as well so yes all right and and i want obviously i want mom in that loop and and to be continued in that loop um so um you know if there are appointments that she can actually make and, and participate in, then I'm good with that. Um, you know, goal is to get Gabrielle home. And the more the more knowledge mom has about what's going on, the better. Yes, I know she's worked closely with the worker uh, previously on the case, and I'll continue that and work with mom. Okay. All right, good. All right, Mr. Jackson. Thank you. Ms. Bird, you're a fairly new caseworker on this case. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And uh, this this child is uh, placed in Leveland at the time, I believe. Is that correct? And, that's correct. Okay. And uh, uh, Ms. Grimsley has asked, has she talked to you about transportation to go see to go see this child? Yes, we talked about setting up a visit this month. Um, she has virtual visits, and then we try to do one in-person visit um, in Level Land where we transport mom to the visit. Um, okay. Yes. Okay, and so it appears that you all, the department's going to be able to make that happen, continue to make that happen. Yes. Okay. All right, that's, Your Honor, that's all I have. Is the brain not being done? That's uh, that's all I have of this witness. Okay. Quick question. Are most of the child's medical appointments and treatment team in the Lubbock area? Yes. Okay. So if we've got something special going on there, can we, can we transport mom to Lubbock so that she can be part of that? Yes. And most likely um, I'll be going with her. So um, if I have to be there, I'll uh, pick up mom and we'll go together. So yes. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you, Ms. Bird. Yes. Mr. Hill. No questions, Judge. All right. Anything to add today, Mr. Hill? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. Uh, Ms. Zavala. Um, Your Honor, I have been able to visit Gabrielle in, in person. Um, it, it depends on um, mood and how, she, how she's doing. The last time I saw her, she, she didn't want a long visit. Um, but I have been able to see her. Um, I know mom's been very cooperative and involved in uh, getting getting stuff done. So I'm glad that she's going to have in-person visits. Um, I think the whole team is working to try to figure out how best to have, help Gabrielle. Um, she does have some real issues that need to be addressed. And I think everybody's trying to uh, work together and, and hopefully we can find something that'll help her. Okay. All right. Um, all 
Well, I will order the neuropsych and the brain mapping so that we can get appointments because, you know, I know that's not going to happen right around the corner. Uh, Ms. Smith is sending a chat to us. She says she's not sure the brain mapping is going to be covered by Medicaid. I just confirmed that with a coworker. It's not covered by Medicaid, even if it's court ordered. Your Honor, I think if we can at least get the neuropsych, um, that will be tremendously helpful. Well, let's start there. Okay. I know we, we have pulled in uh, the state office, um, their subject matter expert on um, mental health issues for this child. We did have a treatment team meeting last week that unfortunately Ms. Bird wasn't able to attend. Um, I was in attendance to it. We have a lot of support out there that we're pulling in for this child so that we can figure out what's going on. It's unclear at this time if these behaviors are mental health related or trauma related. Um, the mental health specialist trellis um, seemed to feel that they may be more trauma related, but to err on the side of caution, we still want to do the neuropsych to make sure that there is nothing going on organically that uh, we need to address. Okay. All right. Well, let's start there and then we'll, I'll order the neuropsych. And, and I mean, I, I, I think there's no harm in doing that. And, you know, let's, let's dot all the I's and cross all the T's and try to do everything we can so that Gabrielle can come home. Okay, anybody have anything further? Judge, do you, uh, want me to, do, do you want me to go ahead and leave the order for brain mapping in there so that if, once that neuropsych is completed, if there needs to be further assessment, it, it's already there. Um, I, Kim sent a message that apparently somebody is paying for brain mapping for another child. And so maybe there's funds out there or something that, that may be available. I guess there's no harm in leaving it in. Okay. Just as long as everybody knows. That it may not happen. It may not happen. Okay. So, okay. And Mr. Jackson, you start to say something. Yes, ma'am. I was uh, going to briefly call my I'm going to have to ask you to speak out over here so everybody can hear you kind of soft spoken. Okay? okay. So uh, to begin with on the services, you had, uh, you've started some services, right? Yes. Um, I've been in counseling, but I just switched to a new counselor. Um, I've also done my psyche eval and I've done the parenting classes. I think Ms. Bird said I'm good on that for now because I have three different certificates that says I have the classes done. Um, I'm also um, registered for the sex abuse class if they want me to do that's in November and I will get that certificate as soon as possible. So as far as I know, I'm, I'm, I'm up to date on everything except for I have to finish 10 sessions of counseling. Um, so I have nine more to go. Those are every Thursday. Um, and then the sex abuse class on November, and I should be good. Okay, and as far as Gabrielle is concerned, you've been making visits, having visits with her, is that correct? Virtually. Okay, and you're wanting to get in-person visits. I'd like to continue the, the one for at least once a month. I know that's hard for everybody because I don't travel, and I know Miss Bird, I think, lives further away from Amarillo than I do, <laughs> so it's a little bit longer of a travel, but I want to continue the in-person. Um, at least once a month, if not more, if we can't do more. Um, but I'd also like to be more involved with the doctor's appointments, even if I can't do it in person all the time, a virtual or a phone call to be involved in that. Because I didn't know that there was a meeting that happened last week. At okay, all. so you weren't involved in that meeting. No. Uh, so I think that you had reported to me that that you have, that, that your child's behavior, you, in your opinion, is getting worse. Yeah, some of the behaviors um, I wasn't aware of until I came in this morning that were not behaviors that were occurring in the home when she was living with me. So, yeah, the, the behaviors seem to be escalating instead of de-escalating. And we also have the issue of medications. Um, it doesn't seem like the input that I've given um, has helped with that. They have her on two medications that I know make her more aggressive, and they still have her on those medications. So that's a concern of mine. Do you, uh, and you reported the type of medications that she's on that make her more aggressive. Did you tell the department that? Yes, I have told them that. I've told Miss Ada that. And I've also given um, a copy of um, her psychiatry um, record to the CPS worker and also the caseworker, Juan, that is down at uh, Leveland. And so you would like to have, maybe you'll have an opportunity to speak with their 
with her physicians about this once uh, she gets involved in this neuroscience. Yes. Okay. Now, there was an issue brought up here about brain mapping, and you would like for that to take place if possible. If right? possible, and there's two different types of brain mapping that I've been told about. I'd like to have both of them, then, if it's possible. Okay. Um, that would be something to take up with the physician. Yeah. Okay. But that's kind of your, your position on that right now. Yes. And uh, is, is there anything else that I haven't covered that you think the court needs to know about? Not at this time, no. Okay. Your Honor, I'll pass the lips. All right. Does anybody have any questions that they want to ask Ms. Grimsley? No, Judge. No, Your Honor. All right, so Ms. Bird, you're aware of these meds that mom's made reference to that, that apparently the child's been on before and, and experienced in increased aggression. Yes, um, I met with mom and um, the previous worker, Ada, um, and I wrote down the medications she mentioned. I have not been able to see the document that was sent to Ada um, and the case manager, Juan, um, but we'll be for sure moving forward to um, have mom involved and, you know, any decision-making with medications and, and the previous medications she was on and the issues that, you know, arise with those medications. So we'll be sure to, mom's being heard basically and having input in those meetings. Do you know when her next med review will be? I believe she just had a med review. Um, so I can follow up with Juan to see then when the next one is. I, I, I believe I have it in my email, but I'll double check uh, to make sure and let mom know. Well, I don't want I don't want to leave this child on some meds that are are just exacerbating the problem any longer than we have to. I'm I'm going to go ahead and just order that we set up another med review where mom can be present. We can get that set up as soon as possible. That this can be discussed. I mean, you know, I I mean, another month that doesn't do anybody any good. You know, and we could lose placement, and everybody knows what that means. I mean, Leveland is reasonably accessible. Houston is more difficult. Yeah, so, if I may. Um, they did attempt to take uh, Gabby to the physician's appointment last week. She had uh, significant behaviors and refused to go in. Um, I know they attempted to call mom um, to talk to her, and that wasn't able to be accomplished. Um, so they have reset another appointment, and they are talking to the physician. When is that going to be? Uh, I don't have that date. Okay. All right. I want mom in the loop. We need to get mom there. I think it would probably make life easier for everybody and maybe encourage, it might help encourage Gabby to go and, and you know, be present during that. Um, do you want to set a time frame for that med review to take place? Yeah, like 10 days. Thank you. Max. But I want mom present. All right. Um, and then Ms. Ms. Grimsley, just take with you whatever you have from her prior physician, you know, whatever it was you may have sent to a prior caseworker, but what whatever you have from her prior physician that might address this would be helpful just to have it with you. No, I don't think she's going to bring that to the meeting and she's got a med list too, I believe. Yeah. Okay. All right. But they never did contact me about Um. All right. Does anybody have anything further? No, Judge. No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right, then um, I will continue the department as temporary managing conservator and continue the child's current placement. Like I said, we're going to order this med review within 10 days and mom to be present for that. I will order um, the neuropsych and we'll get the results of that. And, um, you know, if it indicates that the brain mapping would be beneficial, then, you know, I, I don't know what to do. I'm putting it into the order. We all know we've, what we've heard from Ms. Smith this morning. It may not be covered. Um, then we start looking at, is there another way to get that done? Um, okay. Thank you all very much. I appreciate everybody's input. And I will see everybody back for a review hearing on February 13th of 2024 and um you know if something comes up and we really and we need to get together before that obviously let us know and we will 
So situations like Gabrielle were very fluid. So I, re I recognize that February sounds like it's a very long way away. All right. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Oh, I popped my, I'm sorry. This is our status hearing. My apologies. I am going to order the service plans. It's an order of the court. Uh, Ms. Grimsley, what that means is I do expect you to work those services. I know you're already started on all that, but I am required to tell you just a few things. Failure to work your services could mean that Gabrielle doesn't get to come home. In worst case scenario, it can mean termination of parental rights. You know, don't think we're headed down that path. Don't want to head down that path. But I am required to tell you those things. So I just need to make sure that you understand that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, then. Um, so I'll also order the service plans as an order of the court. And then I'll see you back in February unless we need to get uh, Ms. together. Ms. Taylor's making our record. Okay. Thank, thank you. Take everyone's much. announcements. Melinda Powell for the Department of St. Francis Permanency Specialist today is Mickey Lane. Jerry Morales, respondent father, Christopher Morgan, he is still or still at the uh, Park County Detention Center. Um, I'm ready. Jay Michelson, on behalf of Crystal Richardson, she's present and we're ready. Stacey Zavala, on behalf of Xavier, Karen, ready? All right, thank y'all. Okay, then. Uh, what do we have new, Ms. Lane, since the court report was filed? Um. So what I was saying is sweet little Xavier is doing a whole lot better. Um, he did have a seizure caused from rhinovirus fever, um, which he did spend some time in the hospital for. Um, this was followed up with an appointment in Dallas with a um, neurologist who did some testing for him and did determine that these were caused from fever those seizures. He has not had any since. Um, he is now, although he has the Mickey button, he is eating a 10 ounce bottle of Infamil Gentle Ease already digested formula on his own without the button. Um, he still gets his medications through the button. He's also eating baby food. He has nursing um, that is at the house Monday through Friday as placement works. Um, Crystal is able to attend those. Um, he's, he, he doesn't eat baby food all the time, but they do try to make sure and implement it. Um, he is attempting to crawl and he has started saying mama. Um, with the parents, I learned Christopher yesterday, Christopher Moore has signed for three years in for prison, um, due to his charges. Crystal is, she started working at Burger King prior to that. She was at Wingstop. Um, I was doing a check on Crystal. Um, she is on parole. Um, her parole officer is Jessica Bedell. Um, but I was doing a, a check on Crystal yesterday and came across that she had applied for pregnancy Medicaid September 2nd. Um, so there's a possible concern she may be pregnant again. Um, we also asked her to drug screen yesterday. Um, I spoke to her this morning and let her know that it would probably be court ordered today that she go drug screen. I provided her a letter for her employment at Burger King because she was supposed to be there at 11 a.m. today. And Mickey, are you asking that the court order the drug screen? Yes, it's a yeah. hair and a UA. Okay, he's going to ask what kind. Um, yeah, and she did not go drug screen yesterday when we spoke, so... Has she been doing any drug screening for probation? I have not gotten a response from her probation yet, um, but Crystal states she has. Yeah. All right. Anything else new then from St. Francis? Uh, Mickey, in regards to services, um, has Ms. Richardson been complying with services? She's been in communication. She's been engaging. She um, completed ISF and was released um, September 14th. She was in contact with me that day. Um, she did get a job like a week later at Wingstop where she worked for two weeks. She then um, started Burger King shortly after she wasn't a fan of Wingstop. Um, and so she's been working. She hasn't been able to provide any proof of income because she hasn't worked that long. Um, she did pick up a family 
plan again because she had gotten one when she was incarcerated, but it was it's been a while. Um, and she's planning on making phone calls to all her service providers to get those scheduled. She completed Mommy and Me, Anger Management, um, and some other services while she was in ISF. They were in lockdown, so she was not been able to provide certificates. Um, she stated she would provide those once they came in the mail. Okay. So would you say right now she's been in adequate um, compliance with the exception of the drug screen yesterday? Yes. And then in regards to the father, um, has he been in jail this whole time? Yes. Okay. And so um, he hasn't been able to, has he done anything while in jail or has he been, just been unable to do to being in jail? Well, being in, in Potter, it's, there's not a whole lot of services offered um, there, but he is engaged in what he could do in Potter at the time. Okay. So he he's demonstrating <coughs> adequate compliance, except for the fact he's in jail. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's the only thing I had, Judge. All right. Anybody have any, any questions for Ms. Lane? All right. Then, Mr. Michelson, what do you all have to report today? Uh, similar to what uh, Mickey has um, reported in her review of uh, Crystal's progress, um, Crystal told me she contacted the caseworker yesterday, asked for a case plan. She understands what um, services she needs to complete. I just realized I was on mute for the entire time I said that. So um, basically, um, Crystal uh, provided a pretty good review of, or um, Mickey provided a pretty good review of Crystal's progress. Uh, Crystal told me she was going to make appointments today prior to work. Okay. Um, Mr. Morales? Um, Your Honor, given uh, Mr. Moore's recent sentence, it's unlikely that he'll get out in time to work any services. However, he does indicate the desire to do so in the, in the event that he does get out, but um, I have nothing else to report. All right, and Ms. Zavala? Um, Your Honor, Xavier does have significant medical needs, but he is doing well in placement and they they are are providing great care. I know that he's got to travel pretty regularly to Dallas, which can be difficult. And I know there's kind of an extended family support network that's developing to help with those issues. Um, I know they're working with St. Francis on, on making sure there are enough people in the loop to get him where he needs to go. I've got no concerns about his placement right now. Um, he's He's being well taken care of. Um, and I'm glad that mom is is starting to work services. All right. And Ms. Lane, I, I may have missed it, but did, has she provided you with any certificates yet for what she did at ISF? She has not. Um, I apologize. She I, has, I, okay. She has not at this point. Um, she's waiting for them to mail them to her due to them being on lockdown when she was released. So she hasn't been able to provide anything paperwork wise to me. However, she is very communicative. Okay, good. All right. <clears throat> and placement's maternal aunt, correct? Okay. Right. And, and Judge, can we can I can I ask Miss Richardson just a few questions? Sure. Miss Richardson, you've been present um during um Miss Lane's report, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and she um, discovered that you had applied for pregnancy Medicaid. Did you hear that? She said I applied for pregnancy Medicaid September 2nd, but that would be impossible due to the fact that I was incarcerated September 2nd. Okay, um, are you pregnant at this time? No, ma'am. Okay, that's all I have, Judge. Thank you. All right. Okay, then uh, I'm going to continue the department. As temporary managing conservator, continue the child's placement, find that it would be a continuing and ongoing danger to the child to return home uh, at this time, but uh, that we're making progress. And Ms. Richardson, just keep working away. And I am going to order you to go drug screen today. Um, yes. That's that's going to be a hair in UA. And, and I'm just, I don't know, I don't know, you know, all the circumstances, but let me just tell you, that's a big problem if they ask you to go drug test and you don't go, you know, if there's something going on in your life where you know you just cannot get there that day, communicate that with Ms. Lane. 
you know, we'll try to work with you, but random drug screens are obviously critically important. So yes, you need to be there before four o'clock today. Do you have transportation to get there? Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay. All right. Do you know where to go? Yes, I do. Okay. Then go, go get those done today. So we've got those baselines to start looking at. And um, then I will see everybody back on February 13th of 2024. And that's uh, on a nine o'clock docket. Okay. All right, then. Thank you all very much. Thank you. All right, then. That concludes our Potter County docket for this morning. Thank you all.